Hey guys, I'm Steve, also known as Terramantis, and this is my channel Vitcha. For those of you who don't know, Bandai Namco flew me out to Los Angeles for E3 where I was able to see a behind closed doors demonstration of Dark Souls 3 gameplay. Altogether, it was roughly an hour long demo. A 15 minute introduction where the developers covered key aspects of their philosophies and ideas for the title, roughly 30 minutes of gameplay, followed by about 10 to 15 minutes of Q&A. So in this video we're going to take a look at 10 things that you need to know about Dark Souls 3 from the closed door demo at E3 of 2015. First off we're going to start with something simple but it's extremely important nonetheless. And to start, Dark Souls 3 is going to be the first game in the series to be exclusively for current gen consoles. Additionally, in the days leading up to E3, some aspects of Dark Souls 3 were leaked, and among the info was possibly that the PC version of the game was questionable. Well, those rumors can be laid to rest as untrue. Dark Souls 3 will definitely be coming to the PC in addition to Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Alright, next, Dark Souls 3 will be locked at a steady 30 frames per second on consoles. The PC version, on the other hand, kind of still remains a question mark, but I also doubt that the frame rate will be locked on PC. Alright, moving right along, during the presentation, Miyazaki discussed the pillars of the franchise. These are very similar fundamentals from software stressed with previous Dark Souls demonstrations and continues in Dark Souls 3 with accomplishment through overcoming difficulty, unique online features, and combat. Alright, for the next one we're going to discuss dynamic lighting. To display the lighting effects of Dark Souls 3, during the demonstration the player character walked into a building that had no internal light sources. Inside it was nearly pitch black. After a moment, a torch was pulled out to display the game's dynamic lighting, and it looked quite fantastic. Now, after Dark Souls 2 presentation versus actual gameplay debacle, I completely understand if you're wary of any lighting systems in a demo. You have every right to be cautious. But from the dynamic lighting of Bloodborne and even Scholar of the First Sin for next gen, from what I've seen of Dark Souls 3, there's no reason to suspect anything other than a fully realized and competent lighting and torch system for Dark Souls 3. The lighting wasn't the only visual aspect being showcased though. During the demonstration, Miyazaki really pushed a doomsday theme stronger than ever before, continually mentioning a world in a greater state of peril than previous installments. The trailer too conveys a wasteland-like sense throughout, giving off a sense of ash and death. That being said, in the area where the demo took place, the walls of Lodolith, the landscape was that of a beautifully lit castle reminiscent of Anorlando. Corpses intertwined and growing into trees, and a dead dragon which all gave to this feel of entropy. But the visual style was far from washed out and bland, on the contrary, it was colorful and detailed. And for the next one, let's talk about the combat of Dark Souls 3. For the most part, the fundamentals of Dark Souls 3 combat looks very much the same as previous Dark Souls installments. Meaning weighted, concise, and risk first reward through studying enemies and looking for openings. But there are some big changes. During the demo, Miyazaki spoke on a new aspect of combat for various weapons. One specifically discussed was the ready stance for the straight sword. From the ready stance, the sword could perform unique attacks. Additionally, from the four weapons shown, from my understanding, they'll all be able to be held in an alternate fighting stance. Dual scimitars, for example, could be held in a mode called circle, allowing you to become somewhat defenseless but like a whirling dervish of death. And the great sword could enter a stance called lunge, allowing you to perform powerful strikes and guard breaks. Essentially, fighting arts felt like Dark Souls answered to Bloodborne's weapon diversity through weapon transformations. But instead of weapons transforming to add versatility to combat, now weapon diversity will come from fighting arts and stance swapping in combat. Now as for the rudimentary aspects of combat itself, it seemed as though the animations had a fluidity to them like Dark Souls 2, but they were mechanically similar to Dark Souls 1, meaning the fluidity and quality of the animations was like Dark Souls 2. But the actual animations themselves, like rolling, walking, running, repost, parry, backstabs, all of these actions looked and felt exactly like Miyazaki's Dark Souls. Alright, multiplayer. So to start off, there was no multiplayer in the demo whatsoever. That being said though, multiplayer will of course make a return for Dark Souls 3. For the most part though, the exact details still remain shrouded in mystery. Among the questions asked though that Miyazaki did answer, he did confirm that there will be dedicated servers, summoning signs will make a return, and that matchmaking will be based on soul level. And when asked if soul memory would make a return, Miyazaki pretty much looked in the corner trying to hide a smile and then acted like he didn't even know what we were talking about. Needless to say, soul memory is dead. How the inner workings of multiplayer will be implemented at launch or what various covenants we'll see, well that still remains very much a mystery. Alright, let's talk about some of the enemies from the presentation. We saw several enemies in the demo, like zombie dogs, hollows, a stone dragon that looked like Kalamit, and some normal hollow that transformed into this crazy darkness manis thing. 
One thing they all had in common though was that the enemies of Dark Souls 3 were very fast and aggressive. That being said though, there was one that stood out the most to me. It was a Hollow Knight reminiscent in design to the Balder Knight of Dark Souls 1, but more challenging like the Red Eye Knights of Demon Souls. These Hallowed Knights were also chugging Estus and entering a variety of fighting stances same as the player characters able. Point being, combat looked tough, and it seemed to emphasize one-on-one, -on -one, and when the numbers weren't in your favor, it was definitely meant to be a challenging situation, even when not fighting a boss. And on that note, we did get to see a boss fight. It was some strange, very large humanoid creature with a flame sword. It moved around drunkenly like some old kung fu master made of rubber, and it was very difficult to predict its attacks. Also, when its sword struck the ground, it would leave behind patches of fire on the stone floor of the chapel. And after its health dropped to a certain point, it pulled out a second sword, this one smoking with some darkness. I thought it was some type of sword of ash, seeing as fire, ember, and ash, or cinders, or something, seemed to be a strong theme of the game. So let's talk on some of those points, the themes and lore of Dark Souls 3. First off, not a lot has been confirmed, but this is what I can tell you. Dark Souls 3 seems to revolve around the idea of the resurrection of the Lords of Cinder. It was specifically stated that the creature that looks like the Lord of Giants at the end of the cinematic trailer is in fact a Lord of Cinder, and this scene is of a resurrection. Additionally, Miyazaki stated that as the player character, we'll be attempting to defeat the Lords of Cinder. I imagine this is similar in a sense to the way in Dark Souls you must find and defeat the Lords to collect all of the Lords' souls. Additionally, similar to the way Bloodborne had notes placed around the environments with tidbits of lore, it would seem Dark Souls 3 will follow suit, but with tombstones that the player can read for information. Alright, and finally, this is just some speculation, but I feel as though sacrifice is going to be a huge theme of Dark Souls 3. There is no confirmation during the presentation to the leaks from a few weeks past pertaining to sacrificing enemies to create bonfires, but the display at E3 of Dark Souls 3 seems to verify those leaks at least to some degree. Additionally, just before entering the boss encounter, there were two statues on the side of two thrones and one statue in the middle of the thrones. The statue in the middle looked as though it was of a knight running his neck across his own sword, and the two statues on each side of the thrones were of figures cradling what appeared to be their own heads. Alright, and last but definitely not least, the lead game developer of Dark Souls 3 will be the president from software and father of the Soul series, Hidetaka Miyazaki. More importantly, Miyazaki is the mastermind behind the level design of all his games. Designing the world is actually one of his favorite aspects of game development. Additionally, during the presentation, Miyazaki spoke on the scale of the world repeatedly, emphasizing a huge world larger and more intricate than ever before. There was one part during the demonstration where the player character was standing on top of a castle wall, looking down at what appeared to be a medieval city and they said, All these buildings you see on the screen are subject to exploration even the huge castle in the background. It actually seemed quite unbelievable because, quite honestly, if you saw what we saw in the demo, it was an extremely bold statement. That being said though, they touched on the scale and vastness of the world multiple times, really trying to push home this claim. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. It really does help with searchability and goes a long way with the success of videos here on YouTube. It would help me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. Also, please ask any questions you may have regarding Dark Souls 3 and the E3 demo. I'll try to answer every serious question I can. Please keep in mind that some aspects of the demonstration were difficult to ascertain as there was no interface or HUD, and many of the questions we asked were avoided with typical PR answers that dodged the real question at hand. And finally, it was a hands-off demo, so I was only able to watch gameplay, not try it for myself. For some additional perspectives on the demo, you may be interested in these videos or this podcast from Soulbrand. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.